DC Universe Presents number two, or Dead Man number two, however you want to call it. Uh, written by Paul Jenkins, art by Bernard Chang. Last left off, Dead Man had just possessed this veteran that he is tasked with helping and then held a gun up to his head in order to summon Rama, the goddess who forced him to be Dead Man. This issue picks up right where we left off, where he's like, okay, now that I have your attention, to be clear, I was never going to do that, but me and you do need to talk because I have no idea what is going on. And so Rama takes him on this little thing. He's like, okay, yeah, that's my bad. I, I should explain, you know, a little bit. But here's the thing. You're still just a dude. Like, you don't even understand how, like, time flows or how gravity functions. Like, I'm a goddess, so I'm trying to explain to you how life and death and reincarnation and all that. Like, I'm literally trying to explain to you how the meaning of life is, and it's not that easy. So I can't explain it to you. Just kind of deal with it and trust that I know what I'm doing, you know? And he's like, I just... What's the purpose of all this? He's like, you're helping people. That's the purpose. There you go. Is that good enough? And he's like, okay, well, why are they sticking around with me? And Rama pauses, and she's like... Psychic residue. He's like, psychic residue, psychic residue, yes, that's what it is. Anyway, keep helping people, uh, stop complaining, and don't worry, it'll end eventually. Bye. And so, <laughs> dead man, he, he ends back up in the veteran's body. He's like, okay. So she was obviously lying about that part of where they stay with me. But um, I don't think I can really contact her again using the same method. So we're going to need a plan B. So he goes out to a bar. As the veteran, like he wheels the guy into a bar, and once he sees a cute girl at the uh, bar, he basically starts the conversation for him. He makes a joke, and and then once they get to talking, he leaves the body so that hey, now he's got some company and he's gonna stay busy for at least a little bit while Dead Man takes care of what he needs to take care of. So apparently, there's this bar in Gotham named the Moonstone Club. I guess it's a club, but it's. It's apparently where all of the magic stuff, like supernatural, like where they go to hang out in a club in Gotham. So Dead Man possesses a guy it's in order to sneak in. And one of the runes, because there's a rune stone outside of the uh, club, starts going off like an alarm. And everyone's like, hey, wait a minute. You're actually possessed, aren't you? And he's like, crap. So Dead Man runs inside, manages to... Get in long enough so that he can change bodies over into one of the bouncers and then toss the body he was in out. It's going to get a bit confusing here. And then he starts talking to the other bouncer there. And he's like, hey, I should probably report this to the boss. And the other bouncer's like, what are you talking about? I'm the one who reports stuff to the boss. And you're like, right, right, right. Where is the boss? Anyway, it's like, are you feeling okay? He's like, no, I'm not. I should probably speak to the manager. He's like, I'm the manager. That man calls it quits, punches the guy in the face. And another person's like, inside is like, why'd you punch him? He looked at me funny. That's weird. He's blind. That's probably why he was looking funny. So, you know, Jig is up. And Dead Man's having to fight a bunch of people. Uh, we cut to a person called the Librarian, who's just an old woman with angel wings. She talks to what I assume is a werewolf who's keeping guard outside the door. And it's like, hey, make sure nobody disturbs me. I want to be left alone with my reading. And we just see this. She's in this huge room of books. Dead Man does a couple uh, jumps. And there are people who can actually see him in this club because they're all supernatural. So he, he has to manage to sneak his way downstairs to where the librarian is because that is apparently his end goal um he sneaks into this one girl feigns like oh god it's horrible up there please stop them as she runs downstairs but then they catch on to that too he accidentally ends up on stage for like an open mic night thing and i don't know if this is ever going to come back but one of the uh vampire like kings is there like hmm, i like this one if he lives through the night get him some champagne uh the guards show up and go to fight him but then we cut back into the librarian's room where she can hear all the smashing and banging and stuff like that and she calls for the werewolf whose name is wilfred wilfred i i, do, I don't want to be disturbed wilfred i thought i told you and then he slams through the door 
dead man has possessed a Frankenstein, like, zombie-looking thing. And he, he basically just asked her, okay, I've been through a lot. Just tell me where my book is. And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, you're the librarian. All these books are people's lives, like, from beginning to end. I just want to know where my story ends. Like, at what point am I free from this? And the librarian's like, I'm not, you're not allowed to read your own book. It's like, fine, you read it for me and just tell me where it ends. After some mild threatening. And she's like, okay, well, and she finds this book. She opens up and is like, wow, okay. Uh, the table of contents is already a thousand chapters long. And you are linked to so many other books. Like, I don't even, I don't even know where to begin. And Boston's like, I don't care how it begins. How does it end? She quoting here, the same ending for all of you. You are to be damned together. And that's where we end. Okay, so big things happening, I suppose. Uh, we got, you know, Rama is clearly not expecting that the lives are still intertwined with Dead Man in some way. And then he goes and finds the story of his life and sees that it ends with him being damned, which is not how he thought this was supposed to go. So, obviously, trouble for Dead Man. The book as a whole, though, technically speaking, um, I think it's good. I think it's a very well-told issue. Once we get into the whole body jumping thing, I think they did a good job of me being able to keep track where he is at any time. The fact of, like, certain people can see him, how he's getting in and out of bodies in, like, strategic ways so that certain people are getting punched instead of other people. I don't know. It, it's a good, it's a well-told sort of fight scene of an issue where it's like, all right, how do how does someone who can't be punched himself but still needs to like punch people fight? And it's a good good back and forth in that. I like that. Um, monster designs are kind of lazy. It's just like universal looking monsters. You got a Frankenstein, a Dracula. Like, there's nothing that's really stand out as wow. Look at that. But the art has never really been the highest point of this book. It's not bad, but it's pretty stock standard, which I think you could do a lot more with supernatural elements than stock standard. So overall, I'm going to give this one a six. It's fine. It's it's good. It's got some issues, but I like where the story's headed, and I like the fact that like Rama, supposedly a good goddess, or at least positive in some way, is kind of just teasing this guy along and not giving him straight answers. I like that. It's a good good character setup. So no, I'm looking forward to the rest of DC Universe Presents, at least for the Dead Man story. We'll see what happens after that. <laughs>